What is going on? I want to welcome you from F Court for today, Monday, September 19th, 2022. I'm your host, Sean Murphy, alongside my guy, uh, Jeff Ayerfredi. Jeff, we are two weeks away from preseason basketball, baby. Yeah! We're coming down so the stretch. Ready. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm so ready for basketball. It is insane. We like within a couple weeks, we'll be watching the Detroit Pistons play basketball on a consistent basis until at least March or April. That's that's just a, it's just a great thing, man. It's a great it's a thing. It's a yeah, and dude, we actually get to record this on a day that the Lions actually played some pretty good football too. So like, this is just it's a weird day, but a good day, Jeff. Just stacking I, W's. Oh, What's dude, there? just stacking all the W's, man. I mean, we got. Quite a bit to talk about as far as, you know, things coming up as far as like previewing the season. First of all, before we do all that, I do want to give a quick shout out to a fellow podcast host and member of From Half Court, our guy Troy Sergi, because my guy got married this weekend, Jeff. I just got back from all the festivities and all that, but absolutely proud of my guy, Troy. Congratulations to him, man. We we love that guy. So just He's super proud of him, man. Shout out to Troy, man. Yeah. Big absolutely. Bernard King guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never let that slip away. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. He's the I'll try, man. Yeah, yeah. He's the he's the Bernard King expert, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, man. I mean, listen, when when we're looking at the the upcoming season and everything that we have coming up, I mean, first of all, looking at what Cade Cunningham has done this off season to get himself prepared. I mean, it's reported that Cade Cunningham has added 15 pounds of muscle this off season, going from 210 pounds to 225. But Jeff, in addition, when you're looking at the roster that we're going to be having go out there day one, it's just, it's just impossible to not be excited about what's been happening these past couple seasons. If you look at what Troy Weaver has done over these couple of years, we've talked about it quite a bit, Troy. I mean, quite a bit, Jeff, where the original young core was Bruce Brown, C. Mikhail, Luke, Luke Kennard, Sekou Dumboya, and Christian Wood. Now it's Cade, Ivy, Bay, Stewart, Duran. It's impossible to not be excited about it, man, right? No, and it's crazy too. This the just this other the, the not modern lineup now is everyone he's drafted. Like that's all all yeah. it's her. Is the first three, you know, picks of the first round, uh, Sadiq Bay, Killian Hayes first, then Isaiah Stewart, then just Sadiq three Bay, drafts, and crazy, and then the following draft you get K, the following draft you get Jay Ivy and Jalen Duran, like those are that's your, uh, you already got seven players right there, so, um, it's exciting, man, it really is. Uh, even the second round picks too that are on there, like Isaiah Livers, like a guy who's going to play a lot this year, it just goes to tell you, like I. You haven't had one of these guys, a guy you can recognize talent in the draft. Now he has to, you have to see it all come, you know, together. And, and you see, have to see the success because ultimately his career will be determined by wins and losses, but the moves he's made, it's beautiful. That's how a, a, a good general manager, a great general manager operates. Like it's, it's too early to, you know, start declaring him one of the best in the league, but in terms of what he's done through a short period of time, it's impressive. You, you can't yeah. deny it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Jeff, obviously you and I, I think as of right now would put him among some of the top in the league. But like you said, it's, you know, it's really about what the team's going to do as far as when they actually, it's time to start winning some games and actually start contending and be in the playoffs. But I think the thing that's funny when you actually look at this list, it's that, you know, I think on the bottom, like you said, there's guys that, that are left off here that you could include like Isaiah livers, but then on the top, it's almost like you're struggling to fill this, this list. You know what I mean? Like, like adding Christian Wood in the young core is kind of a stretch because he was one of the older players. But I mean, that just shows and people were upset where... he left. He was he was let go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But that it just shows where we were at versus where we are now and the amount of talent and just how contrastingly different that is. But also just the fact that he's he was able to select a guy like Cade Cunningham number one overall. I mean, that's at the crux and the core of of Troy Weaver's entire plan, right? It just showed the patience and the rebuild, the importance of having that season to put ourselves in the position to be in the lottery. But then in addition, it just shows the selfless star that he is. But Jeff, 15 pounds of muscle in one off season. Is that not uncharacteristic? I mean, that just seems like a lot for one off season, man. This guy's been putting in the work so much for not having a motor 
right? Yeah, yeah, I guess not. And another thing too, it's crazy to see with players like Kate Cunningham that come into the league and it's like they're they're physically they're behind mentally they're much more advanced like usually it's the opposite but usually players like Jaden Ivey come into the league so physically talented but mentally they have to catch up just learning the game Cade came in it was the complete opposite like and you're seeing these reports 15 to 20 pounds of muscle like that's exactly what he needed because there's not many weaknesses in, in Cade's game but the, the couple weaknesses you could say are related to strength I think right. you know getting to the free throw line that has to do with strength I think mm -hmm. um, the, the amount of turnovers he averaged this year he averaged like six assists on you know three and a half turnovers not a great ratio but I think some of those turnovers be, were because of the lack of strength going to the basket um, and then the last thing is just simply being not injured and that's at the beginning right. of the season but being stronger being more uh, just being able to last an entire season so all the, it's, it's great news for for your young star man shows yeah. his work ethic and, and it's not like the type of muscle because a lot of times whenever guys look at muscle you know you, you, you wonder if it affects your athleticism in any way but i feel like i feel like 225 is actually a really good weight for cade's overall yeah. physique his overall size and then in addition i think with the way that he plays the game as far as again we talk all the time about cade's ability to use his body to maneuver and to manipulate and to get contact and to get to the rim. And I think now that he's at 225, I, I think that's just only going to make that job easier for him. And I, you know, he could definitely keep going if he chooses to, but I think as far as like a base to build off of, this is an outstanding first off season for Cade and he just understands what it takes. You know, it, it's a guy that, you know, a lot of times you have a lot of young players that come in and they don't have the best diet. They don't really take care of themselves. They don't really consider what they're doing with their bodies. Whereas Cade's coming into the league, he's vegan. So he eats a very clean diet, takes care of himself in that light. And then again, the fact that someone who's vegan is able to go and add 15 pounds of muscle in the off season, that's just, that's just, un, that just makes it even more uncharacteristic. Right. And I think another thing too, is like with, with guys like LaMelo ball, they're similar height, but you LaMelo ball may never look physically like Cade Cunningham just because with, with Cade's frame, he could fill out a lot more. Like you talked about it. He might add 15 to 20 pounds, but it might be, he's just much more lean. You could see the muscle. He's not going to be this, you know, walking to Corby swole. It's just, it's different. It, especially you talk about last season or this season, like if you can cut down on those three things, if you can get to the line, you know, less turnovers, and, and staying healthy like he already has the complete package that's why like one of the things to dial in on would be the you know getting stronger and he's been doing that so it's a guy that i see is self-aware has the work ethic like we talk about Sadiq bay and his work ethic because of the reports but Cade, like he's such a like he works under the radar you don't see too many even ashton posting some videos like you really don't see much footage of Cade working out like it, it just speaks to again like it goes back to troy weaver we talked about him earlier it all goes back to Troy, like being able to recognize those intangibles besides just on the court, like off the court. He checks all those boxes, man. He really is yeah. a hard worker. I, I, and I think one of the other big differences that we see uh, when when looking at Troy Weaver and in the previous regimes that we had, I mean, again, going back to this list, one thing that I notice when I look at the players on the bottom versus the players on the top, I don't know about you, Jeff, but to me, I look at that young core at the bottom and I say, oh, these guys all actually have skills that complement each other. I actually understand why this is a lineup that we have, and I understand the vision of, of why they're here. The guys up on the top just felt like an, uh, like an accumulation of players. Yeah. I mean, Jeff, three of these guys are shooting guards. I mean, th that's the thing about this team. Like, like it just felt like, I don't know about you, but... When you, like I, I understand when you're looking in the NBA draft, when you're talking about fit versus best player available, you want to lean on best player available. But Jeff, it almost feels like for over a decade, it feels like fit wasn't even part of the equation. Like, what was the fit? What was there to fit into? Right. You're simply just taking players to take them. Like you look at, yeah. I know Andre Drummond's not on that, but Andre Drummond would be another one where you take guys because you see the potential. But it seems like Troy and this whole good character thing they're doing, which is a great way to approach it, is finding guys who have that potential, but are also willing to work to reach that potential. Like I feel like e previous regimes were taking guys or signing guys in free agency where you're like, I, I see the potential, but the player X player was never able to reach it. Like I like Bruce Brown. I think he turned into a good player, but the rest of the guys like even Christian Wood, he's a, he's a pretty good player. I think he reached his potential, but Sekou Demboya, like taking a guy that character wise and in, in, in terms of his mindset, maybe not was all there, but the potential was there. This, this lineup the Pistons have now, all those guys work hard, man. They're well, in the Troy, 
I mean, I'm, I'm so sorry. I just saw Troy so much this weekend. Dear God, I'm going to have the man's name stuck in my head forever. <laughs> but, but Jeff, I mean, even Christian Wood, talk about the character issues and the things that he had in the right. locker room with Houston this last year as well, or as a guy like Jalen Duran was the youngest player selected in this draft. And one of the things that you can't question about him is, is his character, his work ethic, the things that he brings to the game. And you talk about how like the Pistons, it's been about character, but it's about drafting the right people. Right. And, and, and that's the thing is that they're taking that into account instead of just looking at what they're bringing on the basketball court. And I, and I think that's just one of the many things that we've seen over the years. And I know Troy Weaver is someone that we talk about a lot as far as his evolution, as far as, what he's done in in this spot but i mean just talking about what he's done you know up to this season do you think that this is going to be an active year for troy weaver do you think this could be a season where you know we see maybe less mobility at the trade deadline because he's going to want to give this time this group time to play together this season or i know rod beard talked about you know on on the woodward pistons pod that he could possibly see two starters getting traded this season. Where do you lie in that, Jeff? Where do you do you do you expect some patience and and a lack of activity this year? Or do you think Troy Weaver is not going to be afraid to pull the trigger at any given time? I think Troy's never afraid to pull the trigger at any given time. I think the thing you have to think about is does the opportunity present itself? Because you don't know who's going to be available. That's number one. But number two. Right is you have to evaluate these guys this season. Like, if you wait and they're, you know, let's say, because we, we predicted, I, I predict they'll be at 33 wins. If they win 30-ish games, maybe 31, 32, like, there's not really a need to go out because you're like, well, these guys really aren't ready. We'll see who's available. But still, if they overachieve and, and guys are filling roles, Sadiq becomes, you know, whatever you predict of Sadiq, let's say he becomes a close to a 20-point scorer. Jay Nimey mm-hmm. has a rookie of the year, uh, year, and then you have Cade in his second year right. taking off. Like, maybe you look a little, Troy can evaluate the team and be like, you know what? Maybe we don't need a, a superstar, but we do need guys to complement this core. But you don't right. know, really. I mean, it's up to them to establish that. If you know, if, if we're you know towards the end of the season and and you have really have Cade looking like the only guy who's taking the biggest step, then you might Troy might go out and be like, you know what? Let's see what we can get for some of these pieces we have. Like it's really up to the guys playing. I mean, we'll see how guys perform. But I I would always say with Troy, like it it could happen at any moment. I don't think we should ever get comfortable with Troy. Um, but it's going to be important to see how the season plays out. It's, yeah. it's gonna be. I, I feel like there's really only two players that I can really say I don't feel like are going to trade it at all this season, and it's Cade Cunningham and it's Jaden Ivey. I, I feel pretty comfortable in the fact that a guy like Jaden Ivey, the really on, the only way we would see Jaden Ivey in a trade package is if it was for some unprecedented star that we could bring into the lineup. Like if this this Jalen Brown scenario that we brought up, right? Like the only way is I could, is I could, if I could see that happen, but even then, like I would have a very hard yeah, time seeing Jaden Ivey. Be, about it. I mean, I will say, man, from playing this year's 2K so far, I feel like Jaden Ivey is going to be the greatest NBA player of all time. My <laughs> goodness, he's a cheat code in 2K this year, but that's a whole other conversation for a lot of the time. I mean, ultimately, I think you and I have very high expectations going forward in Troy Weaver, but I think in fairness, it's because he set the bar high. Yeah. Right. No question. And so, and so I think now we've talked a lot about how he's drafted very well, and I think he's going to continue to do so. But Jeff, what do you think we can expect? Uh, you know, we we've seen some trades so far, but do you think we're going to see someone who is going to be unwilling to you know give up assets? Do you think when the time is right, he's going to be willing to spend those picks like? From seeing Troy Weaver and how he's operated so far, what do you expect in that realm? You'd have to be absolute, absolutely positive you have the right guys. Like for Cleveland, Cleveland knows, like I have Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. I have pieces. So if I trade my next three or four first-round picks, like at least you have guys that are going to be here for those years and you can count on. Like it, right now the Pistons have to figure out who their, uh, you know, they know who their Evan Mobley is with Kate Cunningham, but they yeah. have to figure out who their Darius Garland is, who their Jar- Jared Allen is, who their Karis LeVert is. Like these guys, if you have enough pieces, I think the pressure of getting rid of those draft picks becomes way, way less. I mean, you could be like, right. all right, let's get rid of these picks. But if there's still a lot of work to do on this roster, I could see Troy keeping those picks. But again, like you have 60 million, you have a ton of cap space next se- off season as well. So you have to wait. You may be able to keep everybody and add somebody in the off season. So, uh, you know, you never know. So with that, it's, it's about finding who's your, your marquee, your, your cornerstones. Cause like you said, 
you could argue there's really two players you can consider cornerstones, and that would be Jaden Ivey and, and, and uh, Cade Cunningham. Maybe you throw Jalen Duran up there, but even I think if there's a scenario where you can get you know, a top 10 player, I mean, you might have to throw in another player. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you'd have to wait for that and see. Yeah. Even though like, you know, Troy Weaver is going to look at any first round pick that, that comes into the organization as big value at the end of the day, Jeff, I just think top five picks are, are really the only guys that are generally truly safe. Yeah. And even then we've seen, that's not always the case. So I think, you know, even though like a guy like Jalen Duran, they see it an insane amount of of value in, and and I do too and I think I think the organization is not going to look to trade him by any cases by any means necessary I think he's just one of those guys that you know you can't just say never right but right. I mean here's the thing a lot of these guys on this roster we're going to have a lot of answers very soon but the truth is there's a good problem to have in the sense of figuring out how these pieces are going to fit together and at the very least just seeing the talent we have now versus where we started whole other day. world night and day night and day absolutely with that man what do you think let us know in the comment section all down below but also be sure you're checking from half court night and day because we're going to be coming out with content every day all season because it's going to be a big year for the detroit pistons it's going to be a big year for jeff and myself and it's going to be a big year in the game of basketball baby so with that we want to thank you all so much for tuning in be sure you go and watch my guy jeff i afraid monday through friday on the morning we'll yes, show and follow, and follow that handsome son of a bitch on twitter also be sure you follow your boy at sean half court and with that we want to thank you all so much for tuning in and we will catch you guys next time from half court be sure to subscribe